pretty important subject. Of course, it's right down my line because most, most of my life, especially for the past 28 to 30 years, I've been actively involved in training gospel preachers, and there's been a reason behind all that. So tonight I just get to expound maybe on some of the things that I've been doing for so long. But as we look at the situation of the church in America, we wonder why is it that there seems to be such a lack of respect for God's Word anymore? Respect, respect for the authority of God's Word? And why is it among those of the churches of Christ that we see now a great lack of knowledge of biblical things? Now you might say, well, we're not that way here at Uligal. Well, I want to assure you that most churches of Christ are dealing with this problem. People do not know the Bible like they once knew it in my grandfather's day. No one wanted to argue the scripture, and you may well remember this, with any member of the Church of Christ because they knew that the member of the Church of Christ was going to get his or her Bible out, and they were going to say, okay, you're telling me that that's what God wants, Now I want book, chapter, and verse for what God wants. In other words, what did they do? They recognized that there must be authority for what we do in religion. In fact, everything we do or say, according to Colossians 3.17, Whatever we will do or say, it all needs to be done in the name or by the authority of Jesus Christ. Well, what has brought about this failure to understand? And as we look at the church, we see that people aren't studying like they once studied. And when they don't study, no doubt, we see churches that are beginning to digress as far as their worship is concerned, as far as their organization is concerned. So many things, as far as their belief in the plan of salvation is concerned. We have a Church of Christ even in our area in Springfield that now they're using women to make announcements in the public, public assembly. They're using women to wait on the Lord's Supper. And it's probably not too long from now that they'll be using women. Oh, go to their website if you want to. It's called the East Sunshine Church of Christ. And they're also piping in instrumental music when they partake of the Lord's Supper so the mood will be set for people to partake of the Lord's Supper. Now, how long do you think it's going to be until the women are preaching in the churches? Or at least in that congregation, not too long from now. And as well as using actual instruments of music, well, what's the difference? But soon they'll be doing the very same thing. A growing lack of respect for the authority of God's Word brought about by a lack of knowledge. One elder from that congregation told our preacher, and he happens to be my son, Ray Sullins, he says, now I know, Ray, that you know much more about the Bible than I do, but we're not necessarily talking about our knowledge of the Word of God. We are going to do these things, and we believe we have the authority to do these things. Of course, he wouldn't state by what authority, and it doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks. We're going to continue on in the way that we're going. Well, sad that is the case in many instances. My daughter, and I don't know how she missed it, that's Rachel, our oldest daughter, who's what, 50 now, Edith, or a little bit older? I told her the other day, I said, uh, well, I was actually preaching, I guess, I don't know if she went with us, no, she didn't go with us to Kansas, but I was preaching all while Ray was out of the country. I had to preach, you know. He didn't share with me what he got that week, but anyway, I had to preach for him. So I was preaching, and I was preaching along the lines of the problems in the church, and I mentioned that there are some preachers now in the churches of Christ that are preaching that it is not necessary for one to be baptized for the remission of their sins. And she was just flabbergasted. She said, Dad, I didn't realize the church had gotten to that condition. Well, that's the problem. We have preachers in the church today who are not preaching the truth. Now, my subject tonight is along the lines of how we need Preachers who will stand up for the truth and who proclaim the truth of God's Word. As you well know, Jesus, when he was challenging his disciples, and the Great Commission had not been given yet, but they knew he was about to leave. And he said in John 16, 13, he said, How be it when he, the Holy Spirit, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Now in the next chapter, chapter 17, verse 17, he said to them, Sanctify them in thy truth, talking about the disciples, thy words are truth. And so what was, the, what was the purpose of those disciples who later became apostles, meaning ones who were sent, what was their responsibility? That was to guide the world into a knowledge of 
the truth. Now, they're referred to in different ways in the New Testament. I'll call your attention to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, where it says, And he himself, that is Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and the edifying of the body of Christ. So he gave some to be evangelists. That comes from a Greek word which is talking more about the message. But there's another Greek word called caruso, which means herald, and Russ knows what I'm talking about. It were these heralds, these heralds are proclaimers of the gospel who are to herald forth the, the evangelistic or the message of truth to the whole world. And here it says Jesus set some in the church. And many people believe here miraculously set some in the church. Now how would he miraculously set some in the church? Because what did he give them? He told them to wait to Jerusalem until the power would come from on high, from God. Is that not correct? So that is the way they became, or they received that knowledge of that truth to proclaim to what? The lost of this world. And Peter began to proclaim that, you well know, in Acts 2, when he preached that wonderful sermon, and he gave them the truth of what they needed to do to be saved, and that was in verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that was the responsibility of those preachers. So because of a lack of understanding, many failed to appreciate the work of an evangelist in the future. In the future as well as in the present. There are many people who do not like evangelists. There are many preachers who do not, or many people who do not like preachers of the truth because they're living not according to what? They're not living according to the truth. Now, you can, I'm not going to do this because it would take all night to do this. Go throughout all the Old and New Testament and you see how many of those people, those prophets, and those teachers, and those proclaimers of God's Word, how many of them were not persecuted for what they believed and they taught, which was directly from God? Every one of them was persecuted. Every one of them. And most all of them lost their lives. The same was true in the New Testament times. The role of an evangelist was taken on by those apostles and they went out to proclaim what? The truth of God's Word. And every one of them but John, who evidently died of a natural death on the Isle of Patmos or somewhere, every one of them were martyred for the cause of Christ. Why? Because they would not cease to proclaim the truth of God's Word. Well, let's get into this subject just a little bit more. Well, what is the condition of this world? It's the same it was in Noah's time. There's no doubt in my mind it's not the same. I don't know if it'd be worse because as God said in Genesis 6, the, even the thoughts and imagine, imaginations of their hearts were only evil continually. And so God, it grieved God so much that he decided he was going to destroy the world by the great flood. You know, you know that story well. Even these children know that story. Well, why was the world going to be destroyed? Because of sin. So in the past with Noah, we find out in the, in the days of the New Testament, Paul was preaching what? Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, The wages of sin is death, but the free, gift of the, gift of, the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So what was he preaching was the real problem. The same problem that John mentioned in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, where the whole world lies in the, in the grasp of the wicked one, that is, in the grasp of Satan. Now, there's no person who's ever lived on the face of this earth other than Jesus who was without sin. We all deal with that problem. And mankind has dealt with that problem ever since the Garden of Eden. We are in a constant battle today. Ephesians 6, why did Paul say, put on the whole armor of God? Well, he gave the reason for it. So that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. Hold up that shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and many other things he, he mentioned. The breastplate of righteousness. 
You put on these things to protect yourself because we are not in a physical battle. We are in a spiritual battle. And so it is those preachers of the gospel who come into this old wicked world and their major goal and thrust is found in Romans 1 verse 16 for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who would believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And that obedience of faith in Romans 1 and Romans 16, that obedience of faith was, be, was to be taught to all the nations by whom? By those who proclaimed his truth. Well, the situation is and has and always been the same. And it is the problem of sin and how to deal with it. Now, why did God place evangelists in the church? Well, there had to be those who were proclaiming his truth. You might say, well, that's such a simple statement. Surely I understand that. Well, the fact is, who is going to proclaim his truth? Now, we have many people who believe that they can preach the gospel, and rightfully so. You don't have to go to a preacher trained school to preach the gospel. But there has to be those men, even if they are self-trained, who have the courage to stand up and to proclaim the truth of God's world, word if this world is going to be saved. And I'm going to bring it down to this church, this assembly, and I'm going to take it even further down to your families. More than likely, if the word of God isn't proclaimed and taught in your home, your children are going to have great difficulty in reaching heaven. And you know that as well as I do. And when you bring them to the assembly and they hear the preaching and proclamation of God's Word, maybe then and only then they will understand what is my need. And my need is to get out of sin. And I need a Savior. And they find out that they can be saved from their sins by baptism into Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. But Jesus gave the plan. He certainly did in His Great Commission. Who was He talking to? His apostles. And what did he say? Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Now how did he reach the Gentile world? Those were Jews he was speaking to then, but also that scripture can even apply to us. How did he reach the Gentile world? Through the same thing, the proclamation of the gospel. He raised up a man by the name of Saul who became Paul who would proclaim the gospel of, of salvation to whom? To the Gentile world. That's when Romans 1.16 comes in. Where it uh, certainly says uh, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It was through the foolishness of preaching that his word would be heralded forth to the people to save them from their sins. And so today we have heralds who stand before the people and they instruct the people. As Paul told Timothy, and Russ knows this verse well, or these verses, because every preacher that comes by the, by the school, he goes to 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4, right, Russ? Where Paul simply said to Timothy, that young preacher, verse 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. You've heard it also, haven't you? Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, and instruct with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, that is, their ears are itching, to want to hear what they want to hear, and they shall be turned away from the truth and shall be turned to fables. Now, you think it's fun to stand before people and to preach? The gospel, when you know basically you're causing people to be very uncomfortable. It's not a, it's not a pleasant thing to do at all. It's not, it's not a pleasant thing because hardly does any evangelist who preaches the truth ever escape the scorn of mankind. Retribution for what he has spoken even though he has spoken the words of God. No doubt you've heard of gospel preachers who have been killed because they have proclaimed the truth 
and some father who's irate or someone who's irate over what he heard was said in that church building comes and blows him away with a shotgun. That's happened more than one time in my lifetime. Why? Because that preacher had the courage to stand up and make statements like this. You'll not get to heaven unless you're baptized from this from your sins. Simple things like that that we understand and know to be the truth. That's no big problem for us. But what if you're like 85% of the religious world and you believe that baptism is not necessary for the remission of sins? That's where the problem comes in. And you want to really stir some pots today? You start preaching and teaching the truth on marriage, divorce, and remarriage. That a man or a woman does not have the right to put away his mate except it be for the cause of fornication. You want to really get people heated up? Start in any general assembly of, of many denominational churches today and churches of Christ and start talking about the problem with same-sex marriage, homosexuality, bestiality. They feel that's none of your business. Well, it's all sin, isn't it? And so we have to preach against sin. What good does it do for our evangelists to stand up and preach about something that he knows has little or nothing to do with a person's soul salvation. In other words, things like this. What are some good ways for you to get along with your wife? Now, some of you might be interested in hearing about that. <laughs> and there might, be some, <laughs> there might be some biblical truth involved there. But, you know, the latest book I read was on counseling for young people, and I want to share with you some of the things that I heard from that book or I read from that book. What's wrong with the Bible? One of the greatest lessons that children need to know today is Ephesians 6, 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. And many a child does not honor their father and mother anymore. And uh, sad to say, many of their parents really don't, might I say it, deserve any honor. Much at all in the way they're raising their children, in the way they're behaving their, themselves in this life. I tell you, this is a mix, mixed up, out of control world because of sin. First Peter 4 verse 11, preach the oracles of God. If any man preach, let him preach the oracles of God. So we have to have those brothers who are able and willing to stand up, even at the point of death, being faithful unto death and you receive the crown of life, who are willing to stand up and to preach those wonderful truths. Well, what do we need to know about truth from a preacher? Well, we need to know that salvation comes through the Word of God. What did Paul say about Timothy and his mother and his grandmother? From a child you have known the Holy Scriptures that have made you what? Wise unto salvation. Now, who's going to stand up and proclaim that? Is it, are the Al-Qaeda going to do that? <laughs> no, they're not going to do that. What about the people who believe in Hinduism, Shintoism, Buddhism, isms and schisms and schisms all over the world? They're not going to preach it. Someone who knows the truth has to stand up and proclaim th this truth for someone to know what must I do to be saved? What was the question that was asked on the day of Pentecost? What must I do? In other occasions of the Bible, what must I do? They wanted to know what they needed to do to rid themselves of sin. That's the reason for a preacher. All needs are supplied with the Word of God. Preachers need to preach that because people are searching everywhere on this earth for everything which will not bring them any real satisfaction. All Scripture given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction and righteousness that the man of God might be complete, truly furnished under all good works. That's what I was told throughout my life. And you know, folks, those old-timey preachers who preach that scripture from 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, they were telling me the truth. They were telling me where the source of my happiness would be, where it could be found, where I could examine it, and by following or patterning my life after what I see from God's directives, especially in the New Testament, then I can know what God wants me to do and I will live that life 
that to me, I think, brothers and sisters, I don't know what you think, but I think the Christian life is the best life to live on the face of the earth. I mean, what is, what is a better lifestyle? Going out and getting drunk every weekend? Smoking dope? Going out and committing fornication? Stuff like that? Is that what life's all about? No, these people are mixed up. The real, the real purpose of one's life, Solomon said, you know as well as I do, in Ecclesiastes 12, is to what? Is to do what God wants you to do for the end of the whole matter. The, hen, the end of the whole matter is to what? To fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole of man. This is the conclusion. And Saul had tried everything on earth to bring himself pleasure, and he found out that the real purpose of life was in fearing God, understanding who God is, and keeping His commandments. That was the whole of man. Well, how are people going to know about authority in the Bible unless preachers teach them? And what's going to happen if preachers don't preach? Men are going to turn to fables. Just look all around you today, and you can see where so-called preachers are not preaching the truth. And what do men and women turn to? They turn to philosophy. They turn to everything else under the sun, but they never turn to God's Word because they've been told you can't understand it anyway. You need a hierarchy to tell you what the Word of God means. And someday, people are going to be judged by this Word. And preachers need to tell people that. John 12, 48, He who rejects me and receives not my words has one who judges him. The words that I have spoken unto him, the same shall judge him in the last day. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we will be judged according to what we have done in this, this body, whether it is good or bad. And that good or bad is determined by God's holy word. And without preachers, oh, I'm not saying other people can't preach. Uh, other men, I'm, I'm not saying that other men can't preach who wouldn't claim to even be an evangelist or preacher. But I tell you what, brethren, if you stand up and you present the Word of God, you become a proclaimer. You become a herald. Some of the greatest preachers who have ever lived never went to a school. Never went to a school. I'm not saying that people shouldn't go to school, by the way. I wouldn't say that for sure. I'm not saying that they shouldn't go to a school because I, I believe even Paul went to a school. And all those little Jewish boys about the age of 10, they started going to schools, learning what God's will was so that they could pass it on to their families and to other people, and they became the rabbis or the teachers. Remember, Jesus was the good teacher. He was the great rabbi, the great teacher of all things. And he has wanted us as his, as his servants to proclaim his truth throughout the world. God has always used men to proclaim his will. Remember Noah. Remember Moses. Remember Aaron. Remember John the Baptist, Jesus, and the apostles. And I firmly believe that a nation's faithfulness has always been tied to the presence of those who faithfully proclaim his will. Now you just think about it. A nation will not remain as it needs to remain without someone in the street preaching the truth. So when you talk about the, uh, the need for a preacher to preach the truth, there is no greater need. Because that very preacher will preach what? That every local church needs to have its own elders who will direct that flock. There is a place in the church for an evangelist, for a herald of God's word, for a proclaimer of the truth. And you can't take him out of the picture any more than you can take elders out of the picture Members out of the picture, teachers out of the picture. That is the picture of what God intended for there to be on the face of this earth as we gather together to worship Him and to study the Word of God together and to march hand in hand toward that heavenly home. It takes all of us. But don't ever forget the value of a proclaimer. I believe you've got a pretty good proclaimer here. He's a graduate, you know. What else could I say? No. I tell you, Russ has really been a good man, and I think he still is a great man. And he's going to become a greater proclaimer of the truth. 
encourage him, strengthen him, and he'll, he'll come out with it. it. He might have to grit his teeth every once in a while like I did when I was a young man saying, well, will I be after here this Sunday? And I'd be thinking that in my mind. You know, one of those moving sermons? And I'd just go ahead. And one of them I remember one Sunday was on smoking. Now, there I was about 23, 24 years old. Now, back in that day, 75% of all Americans smoked. Now, less than what, 20% smoke? Well, in between Sunday school and the church services, the men, that is four or five men at least, would go out in the front of the building, standing on the walkway, and they'd light up their cigarettes. Well, now, that was great. And they'd smoke in between uh, Sunday school and the services. Well, I, first of all, that just, that was almost killing me. I just didn't know what to do. Because I was a young man. We had two elders. I'd already spoken to him, them about it. And, and uh, they, they concurred with me. They just didn't know what to do. So I just took, took the bull by the horns. And I decided I'm going to preach a sermon on cigarette smoking. Now, the major reason I did that is for this reason. Edith and I, and I think Edith might remember this, we were working with a young couple that had a couple of children, best I can remember, Edith, and they were just down the road from the church building. And we had finally convinced those people to come and to worship with us at the, at the uh, worship assembly. And so here they come driving in, and they were very conservative thinkers, driving in the church lot, and they look up there and saw those men smoking, and they just kept driving in a circle and drove right back up to their house, and they never came in that church building. And we tried to overcome that, but we never could. So what I had, what I had one of the deacons do is this. Well, actually, he was a song leader. I don't think he was a deacon, but a great friend of mine. I said, I want you on Friday to go out there in that front yard and pick up all the cigarette butts. And so he said, okay, I'll do it. Well, he brought me a can of them. There were over 500. And I just set them up on the pulpit. And then I told them the story about those people. And I said, the least you can do if you're going to smoke is go around behind the building. Of course, I never convinced those men to stop smoking. And I let God judge them on that. But I know one thing, there's nothing good about it. It never has been anything good about it. So if there's nothing good about it, how can, it, how can anything be good? So there has, has to be those proclaimers. There has to be those proclaimers who will stand up and say enough is enough. There's only one reason for divorce. It's wrong to drink alcoholic beverage for any reason. There has to be those guys who will do it. There has to be those guys who will stand up and say unequivocally that you have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. There has to be those guys who will stand up and reject the teachings of this world and faithfully proclaim his truth because no one else will do it usually except the man who has the strength to stand up in front of the people whether he has to walk out the door at night without a job he'll still proclaim God's truth and so support this young man and if you hear something coming strange out of his mouth you call me up would you I know where Ulagal is and I'll be here and I'm not expecting that to happen, of course. But I would. That's what I told those, I'd tell those African students. Now, I'll tell you something. If I hear you're out there in the bush and you're teaching something wrong, I'm going to come and several of us are going to come. So be sure you stick on the truth. You know what the truth is. Now, preach the truth. And believe it or not, it's just because of people knowing that they're supported in preaching the gospel that they'll go ahead and stand up there and proclaim the truth. Thank you, Russ, for your dedication to the cause of Christ, for your desire to want to proclaim His truth, for your father-in-law who has no fear to proclaim the truth, and for all the others who have graduated from the Bible Institute of Missouri, from Memphis School of Preaching, Brown Trail, and uh, Bear Valley, and many, many other preacher training schools. And those of us who may have graduated from, from uh, earlier days from some of our Christian colleges, we're thankful for all of our preaching brethren. And thank you for allowing me to come here tonight and to, to start out this program.
And I think it's a program that's going to last throughout the summer. So maybe people still come after night. I don't know, Russ, but that would be their decision. <laughs> if you're not a Christian, probably everyone in here who is subject to the invitation has already obeyed the gospel. But I think you know what you need to do to obey the gospel. Out of a penitent heart, confess your faith that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. And if you're a Christian, you need the prayers of this congregation in some way. Please come as together we stand and sing.